Corporate Governance Platform, a program from the Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators of Nigeria, ICSA, is now at your doorstep. By the way, what is corporate governance and what are its key pillars? Would there be any conflict of interest if our person combines the roles of our chairman and our chief executive officer in a corporate organization? What can Nigeria do to gain international recognition in the context of the application of corporate governance? These are many more questions that will be answered on Corporate Governance Platform, a program designed to inform and educate our numerous viewers on the adoption of corporate governance best practices by corporate entities. Join the Corporate Governance Platform crew every Thursday at 4.30 p.m. on MITV, your talent station via DSTV 255 and UHF 43. Corporate Governance Platform, your strategy for the adoption of corporate governance best practices by corporate entities. Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators of Nigeria, Ixen, the hub of governance professionals. Good evening and thanks for joining us on Corporate Governance Platform, coming to you live from MITV and proudly brought to you by the Institute of Charter Secretaries and Administrators of Nigeria, Ixan. I am Tunde Odeyemi, and in today's episode, we are going to take a look at equitable treatment of shareholders and the protection of minorities' rights. And I have with me right in the studio a very special and distinguished guest, Chief Olushegun Oshunkeye, C-O-N-O-F-R. You will be leading the conversation on equitable treatment of shareholders. Chief Olushegun Oshunkeye is a chartered accountant by profession and a distinguished fellow of the Institute of Directors Nigeria. He is a former chairman of Nestle Nigeria PLC, Lafarge Africa PLC, Glasso Smithlin Consumer Nigerian PSC, amongst others. Chief Olushegun Oshunkaya joined the Rotary Movement in July 1971, and he is a past president of the Rotary Club of Ikeja between 1993 and 1994. He is a past president of the International Chamber of Commerce, Nigeria, and Nigeria Employers Consultative Association, the umbrella organization of employers in the organized private sector of Nigeria. He was the chairman of the Director Development Committee of the Institute of Directors between 2003 and 2009, dealing with corporate governance issues and best practice for directors. He served as an external member of the Senate of the University of Lagos between 2002 and 2007, where he received an award of excellence in recognition of his immense contributions to the emergence of entrepreneurial studies in the University of Lagos. He served as foundation member of the Governing Council of Ajayi Crowder University, or York, between 2006 and 2014. And he was at the time a facilitator in directing the enterprise program at the Lagos Business School of the Pan-African University. Chief Olushegun Oshunkaye is a stickler for excellence, and he is a three-time recipient of the National Honors Award, CON, OFR, and OON in recognition of his significant contributions through the private sector to the industrial, commercial, and agricultural development of the country. Chief Olusha Goshuka, you are welcome to Corporate Governors Platform. Thank you for inviting me. I'm pleased to be here. It's indeed highly delightful to have you here and want to thank you for finding time to join us on the program. My pleasure. I want to believe our viewers we have a lot of things to take away from today's program. And we are discussing equitable treatment of shareholders and the protection of minorities' rights. I would like to start this conversa conversation by asking, who are the minorities' shareholders? In very simple terms, minority shareholders are those shareholders who individually and collectively own less than 50% of the shares in a company. Individually and collectively? Yes. Once it is not up to, simplistically, okay. up to 50%, they are all minority. Any person owns 50 and above, those are the majority. Wow. wow. But having said that, we do also have what we call retail shareholders. These wow. are the individuals. They can number in thousands, but in the aggregate, even including institutional investors, if it's less than 50, 
we call them minority shareholders. Wonderful, wonderful. I would like us to go into the, a provision in the Nigerian Corporate Governance uh, Code. That principle 23 of that code provides for equitable treatment of shareholders and the protection of their statutory and general rights, yes. particularly the interests of minority shareholders, and promotes good governance. Now, how do you think the protection of the minority impacts positively on corporate governance? The, the shareholders have a stake in the company, wow. and particularly minority shareholders. And uh, in our context, uh, the retail shareholders, these are the individual shareholders who don't have much, but when you aggregate, it becomes something large. Sure. And uh, they all have interest in the success of a company, mm. even though they may not be uh, controlling or they have significant influence. But collectively, the platform for share minority shareholders is generally the general meetings of a company. That's just one of the platforms. Okay. There, that they is have annual general an meeting, right? Yes, okay. uh, annual general meetings, external general meetings. Okay. That's why I lump them as general meetings. Okay. Which is meetings of shareholders called by the board of the company. Okay. At that meeting, even individual shareholders have opportunity to ask questions of interest to them in the interest of the company. Wow. So it is left to the chairman to see that he or she uh, calls a broad spectrum of shareholders, including minority shareholders, not just the institutional shareholders, who in their own right, they are minority shareholders, but they are more organized. Wow. So the individual shareholders have uh, formed associations over the years, okay. and they have become a potent force in the matter of minority uh, shareholders protecting their rights. And this they do in many forms. Okay. Now, do you think the shareholders can be treated fairly and equitably since decisions are made based on the votes of the majority on any issues and the votes of the minority, you know, would not be higher than the votes of the majority? Mm -hmm. Do you think they can be treated equitably? Well, I will start by saying minority shareholders should be treated equitably. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that is again comes to the board, the management, and of course the chairman of the board. Uh, they should be treated equitably. But then there are safeguards for minority shareholders to make their voice felt. One safeguard is uh, through the uh, general meeting platform. Okay. And that's safeguard. Now, if a shareholder feels strongly about an issue, he or she has the right to write to the company, either the investors' uh, department, the investors' uh, re relations department, or even the company secretary to voice his or her concern. Okay. But generally speaking, individual shareholders are stronger if they belong to associations, because the association becomes stronger and they have more resources of talent and time to talk to companies to aggregate their interests and concerns, and then they'll be listened to, or should be listened to, because they are working in the overall interest of the, of the company. The, of the, of the okay. Now, since there is no law or regulation that says that the minority must be represented on the board or management, how can their interests be further protected? The, Nigerian Code of Corporate Governance 2018 has provided in a way for that when they talk of independent non-executive directors. Okay. It is left, we are now talking of composition of the board of directors because the board of directors control and govern the company. Yes. And that's where decisions are made. It's one of the major platforms, board of directors and management. Now, it is now left to the board particularly the chairman of the board of the company, when thinking of composition of directors, to think, to have a broad spectrum of directors and consciously think of bringing in, in minority shareholders to be on the board. Mm -hmm. It can be through the association or it can be through headhunting, but to make it apparent that individual uh, minority shareholders are on this board 
just like the chairman of the board or the board, we think of uh, other composition uh, elements such as uh, diversity of uh, the board, uh, uh, gender diversity, uh, you can say youth diversity, diversity. Uh, uh, technical knowledge diversity, if your company requires some technical knowledge. So in the broad spectrum of composition of the board, you should take this into account, and specifically minority shareholders. But of course, if you are going to take minority shareholders, that person must be worth it to be on the board. On the board. And be able to contribute meaningfully. The beauty of it is that she, he or she can go back, if he belongs to an association, to take their views into account when going to the board meetings. Splendid, splendid. So by the virtue of having independent, non-executive, director on the board yes a minority shareholder can be appointed on the board oh yes oh that is oh, splendid yes. in fact yes because independent uh, non executive directors are those directors who don't have substantial shareholding, shareholding. Okay. but they may they may not but i value that you have taken somebody who maybe uh, he or she has just one thousand shares he's a minority shareholder and if that minority shareholder belongs to an association he can enrich himself by taking the views of members of his association on board when he goes to meetings or representing uh, or in affairs of the company that's quite impressive now do you think that the provision of the national code of corporate governance that shareholders should be treated fairly and equitably in, is contradicted by another provision stating that the board should encourage institutional investors to influence the standard of corporate governance without similar reference to the retail shareholders and their contributions to corporate governance. My view is that institutional shareholders as part of the minority shareholders, the retail shareholders are of course minority shareholders. Now, the reason for putting that aspect is that they found that the institutional shareholders from experience, we are not much interested in voicing their concerns to the companies, organizations in which they have shares. Possibly because they have access to the management and analysts, and they read a lot of literature about the company. Okay. But they can uh, come from the point of view, from the various nuances of corporate governance, analytical work, and asking pungent questions from their own perspective. The retail shareholders are also interested in the success of the company, so it's the same thing. So I would say, therefore, it is what I would call concurrent uh, responsibility. Okay. So the retail shareholders, they have their concerns, they have their interest, they have their uh, talent, and they can put it before the board in the interest, overall interest of the company. So it is not contradictory, it is, in my opinion, complementary and concurrent. concurrent yes okay thank you very much chief now on the mandatory annual related party transaction resolution to be presented for the approval of the shareholders at the annual general meetings of limit of listed public companies the interested party who in most cases you know are the majority shareholders are not allowed to vote is this enough protection for the minority shareholders uh, it's one of the elements of protection. It's not the whole protection. Okay. And the reason they are not allowed to vote is that uh, you don't want to be judged and jury in your own case. You are bringing the matter before the general meeting. meeting. Of course, we know how you are going to vote. Your vote is 51 plus. <laughs> As you see, when you put it in, uh, no more say. We can understand. Yes. But by excluding them, that's the related party controlling shareholder. Shareholder. By excluding them, let the retail shareholders, the minority shareholders, decide on that particular issue. And therefore, their interest is protected, their rights are protected. But there are, there are other rights. Attending meeting is a right. Getting a, a accounts, financial statements is a right. Yeah. There are other rights. Yes. But that particular one is put there so that they don't feel excluded or that they are shuffling something down their throat. If the majority shareholder comes as a related party, this is the what I want and so on, and they put it to vote, and the majority will have it. But they brought the idea. 
that is why they are being excluded and it's a good potent right for minority for the minority shareholders it's been an interesting conversation on equitable treatment of shareholders with chief olushagmo shukaye c o n o f r we'll have to go on a very short break when we come back we we'll continue with the conversation please don't go away corporate governance platform a program from the institute of chartered secretaries and administrators of nigeria ixa is now at your doorstep by the way what is corporate governance and what are its key pillars would there be any conflict of interest if a person combines the roles of a chairman and a chief executive officer in a corporate organization what can nigeria do to gain international recognition in the context of the application of corporate governance these are many more questions that will be answered on corporate governance platform a program designed to inform and educate our numerous viewers on the adoption of corporate governance best practices by corporate entities join the corporate governance platform cool every thursday at 4 30 pm on mitv your talent station via dstv 255 and uhf 43 corporate governance platform your strategy for the adoption of corporate governance best practices by corporate entities institute of charter secretaries and administrators of nigeria except the hub of governance professionals you are welcome back. It's the corporate governance platform, proudly brought to you by the Institute of Charter Secretaries and Administrators of Nigeria. And we are discussing the equitable treatment of shareholders and the protection of minority rights. And Chief Olushegun Oshunkeye, CEO and OFR, a distinguished guest, has been leading on the conversation. Chief, you have talked uh, very well on how minorities' rights are being protected. I'd like to ask this question. How can a minority shareholder who has an issue with the company get the opportunity to interface with the management or perhaps the board instead of waiting till the next annual general meeting? If the issue is of particular concern and urgent in quotes, okay. he or she has the right to write to the company. Many companies, big companies, have investor relations department or a similar department by different names. But if that even face a letter from the shareholder to the company secretary. Okay, to the company, company secretary. secretary. We do. If the company secretary will know which department anyway. Okay. And then you can voice your concern. But your concern will be more uh, potent if you have the backing of your association mm. individually but if of course you are what i say an expert or a specialist in the line of uh, your area of concern well you can take on and decide to do it directly with uh, with the company okay uh, because you are now talking as a shareholder interested in the affairs of the company but a shareholder who has special knowledge or competence that, uh, if you're a lawyer as an example and you want to talk of the nuance of the law in one respect or other you can handle it on your own and the company is bound to see that this is something that they look into because both the shareholder and the company the management and the, well, the directors are working in the overall interest of the company. company. So it is from that perspective and mindset that all of them should operate. Okay, Chief, you talk a lot about the association. Yes. Will you recommend shareholders generally to try and belong to an association? I do. I do. Now, uh, the association started about 30 years ago. And in fact, the government encouraged the formation of associations. Oh, wow. Uh, I think we have seven zonal, either six or seven zonal associations all over the country. And they have contributed uh, meaningfully at AGMs, which I have attended and uh, directed and so on. So I will encourage shareholders, because there's what we call uh, unity in numbers and strength in numbers, to be members of asso zonal associations. They will learn more as well as be able to contribute Wow. Yes, yeah, so I would recommend and so I support shareholders to join shareholders yes. associations. Yes. Okay. Now the codes 
the still talking about the corporate governance code 2018 requires the board to ensure that the minority shareholders are adequately protected from abusive actions mm. by controlling shareholders what forms can such abusive actions by the majority shareholders take majority shareholders uh, control the company they okay. govern the company either by nominating directors who okay. are the ones actually directing the affairs of the company and it can take many from let me give you some one or two examples for instance uh, transfer pricing okay over invoicing or under invoicing if the controlling share the majority shareholders have subsidiaries or joint ventures or associated companies they can so do it that a company can be told to under invoice mm. to the other uh, related uh, party entity to the majority shareholders and that is oppressive to the minority shareholders it's abusive in nature it's abusive in nature it's oppressive it could be under invoicing i've given that example yeah. it could be over invoicing for many reasons either because they want to shift the tax base between countries if you are a country a tax is low and country b tax is high they probably so invoice uh arrange their invoicing uh, uh, agreement to favor that the resources are transferred to the low income tax country so that's like abuse that's oppressing the minority shareholders of course fraud wow insider trading conflict of interest so there are many areas or ways where the majority shareholder can oppress the minority shareholders in those areas okay let's look at another uh, provision of the code the code provides that the board must ensure that all shareholders understand the ownership structure of the company and that current information must be disclosed on the beneficial owners of the major shareholdings on any shareholders owning controlling or influencing five percent or more of the company's share yeah. now what are the advantages of this provision the advantages of this are that um, if you know the structure and uh, apart from the code even the company's analyzed matters are requires disclosure in the financial statements of who owns what it will influence your own investment decision okay so if you look at the board and the other things and you look at the shareholders you it's part of the thing informing your opinion do i want to invest apart from other parameters in this company or not so the more disclosure and the companies are encouraged to be transparent and give full disclosure and communicate regularly with their shareholders wonderful and they can do this nowadays with websites okay on your website should be comprehensive full disclosure for your operations your activities your financial statements and your policy and what you want to do in the next coming future for few years so it is a shareholder who thinks or believes that this is a company that is transparent and works with ethical uh, uh, ethos is likely to attract more investors even from the minority shareholders wow so uh, that is the company is now is in their own self-interest to communicate to disclose and you can do that by circulars to shareholders or on your website or the website okay let me quickly ask this question it may be our final uh, question yes. because of time um what advice do you have for companies desirous of avoiding transgressing the law and regulations in the area of minority protection your final advice today my final advice is uh, the board and management should act always with integrity the board and management will with integrity and as we said earlier on uh, transparency regular communication with uh, minority shareholders disclosure full disclosure of your activities as much as possible so that if the minority shareholders are the 
Now you have engendered trust by this transparency, integrity, disclosure, communication. Your, they will support you at any time because it's in their overall interest and the value of the company will, the corporate value of the company will also will rise. Have will rise. Thank you very much Chief, for coming on the show. Thank you. And this is where we are going to wrap it up. Uh, my final words are the board should act with integrity, transparency, and full disclosure to protect minorities' rights. Chief Olusegun or Shunkaya, CON or OFR, thank you very much for coming on the show and for sharing your thoughts on equitable treatment of shareholders. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, sir. Thank you. This is where we wrap it up on Corporate Governance Platform. We invite you to join us again next week, same station, same time. I remain tuned to your day, Amy. Bye for now. Corporate Governance Platform, a program from the Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators of Nigeria, ICSA, is now at your doorstep. By the way, what is Corporate Governance and what are its key pillars? Would there be any conflict of interest if our person combines the roles of our chairman and our chief executive officer in the corporate organization? What can Nigeria do to gain international recognition in the context of the application of corporate governance? These are many more questions will be answered on Corporate Governance Platform, a program designed to inform and educate our numerous viewers on the adoption of corporate governance best practices by corporate entities. Join me.